All right, sweet. So again, we'll start with five minutes of non-yoga calisthenics. Um, if what I'm doing doesn't work for you, please don't feel like you have to do it. You can do something else. Um, you can do sun salutations, whatever, but we'll just start by warming up the body before hopping into the 26 and two. So we'll start just by lifting the legs up and kind of marching in place. You wanna get your knees in line with your hips, so thighs parallel to the floor. Pull the belly in, keep the shoulders down and the chest up. I like to kind of flex my toes up. So traditionally, in this style of yoga, we start with a breathing exercise called pranayama deep breathing, where we inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. And we do it in a warm room. So we literally begin class by inhaling warm air and then exhaling like stale cold air. Um, and that's how we start to warm up. Because we're not in a super hot room right now, we're gonna start with some like body movements and then we'll hop into the pranayama breathing. So you're welcome to stay at this pace, marching in place. You can also pick it up. Try to keep lifting the knees up. You can even tap opposite hand on the opposite foot or on the opposite knee. Keep your chest up, pull the belly in, keep the shoulders relaxed, chin away from your chest. Try to lift the knees up in line with the hips. Okay, from here, we're gonna go into jumping jacks. Woohoo! And again, if any of this doesn't feel right, where you know you have an injury, where you're like, this ain't working, please don't do it. Okay, getting a good range of motion with the arms, legs. Okay, from here, we're gonna go onto the floor and hold the plank. So, you can see me. So you can be on your knees, okay? You can be on your forearms. If you have bad wrists, you can make fists and be on fists. Otherwise, spread your fingers wide, hug the elbows in, spread the shoulders apart, lift your heels, shoulders over wrists, long neck, long neck, so look ahead, pull your belly in, contract your thigh muscles up towards the ceiling, Push the floor away with your palms. You can stay here, or you can start to bring right knee to right elbow, left knee to left elbow, right knee to right elbow, left knee to left elbow, and then pick up the pace for mountain climbers. So try to keep shoulders over wrists, elbows in, chin away from your chest, long neck, pull the belly in, woohoo. Okay, we're gonna go back to plank. So holding a plank, pull the belly in, hips up, heels up, press down through all 28 knuckles, long neck. Okay, lift your hips up, down dog. Walk your hands, feet back together. Gonna go back into jumping jacks. So in yoga, we always say like, the safest way to come out of a posture is to reverse out. So if you go in steps one, two, three, you wanna come out steps three, two, one. Um, and it's the same thing here. We started jogging in place to jumping jacks, to plank, to mountain climbers, to plank, to jumping jacks. So we're reversing out and we will end with jogging in place. So lift the knees up, thighs up, woohoo, shoulders down, pull the belly in, keep the chest up. Ten more seconds. Okay, awesome. Go team, high five. So from here, we'll go into the traditional 26 postures and two breathing exercise. Starting with pranayama, deep breathing, good for your lungs and respiratory system. So you'll inhale through your nose, exhale through your mouth. All the time, breathe deep against the back of your throat, your nose, and your mouth. Or just to pass it to breathe as much as possible, as long as possible, as slow as possible. Don't forget to have fun. So standing up, bring your feet together, toes, heels touching nicely. Interlock your ten fingers, cross your thumbs, glue your knuckles underneath your chin. 
rock your weight into your heels. Relax your shoulders down away from your ears. You made it to class. Concentrate, meditate, and begin. Inhale, head down and arms up. Breathe in through your nose. Lift your elbows up, suck your stomach in, fill up your lungs. Exhale, head up, keep your eyes open, slowly push your head back. Exhale through your mouth, reach your arms forward, elbows touch. Inhale, head down, breathe in through your nose, down through your throat to the very bottom of your lungs. Exhale, head up as you exhale, open your mouth wide like you're fogging up a mirror on the ceiling. Exhale completely, elbows touch. Inhale, slowly bring your chin down, look straight ahead, so chin down. Elbows up, stomach in, full lungs. Exhale, head up, slowly push your head back, squeeze your palms together, wrists together, forearms, elbows touch. Inhale, head down for one, two, three, four, five, six, full lungs. Exhale, head up, six, five, four, three, two, elbows touch. One, inhale, head down, I'll do it with you, breathing in through the nose. Exhale, head up, exhaling through the mouth. Inhale, head down. Exhale, head up. Inhale, head down, every you inhale. You want to take in more air than the last breath to expand your lung capacity. Exhale, head up. The more you exhale here, the more fresh oxygen you can take in on your next breath. Push the air out. Inhale, head down. So make this the deepest breath so far, breathing into the top of the lungs, middle of the lungs, bottom of the lungs, full lungs. Exhale, head up. In our day-to-day -day life, we don't really use the full lung capacity, but the lungs need to be worked out just like any other part of the body. Inhale, head down. So this breathing exercise is really good for your lungs. Open your rib cage wide. Think about your lungs expanding. Exhale, head up. Keep your eyes open so you don't get dizzy. Slowly head back. Reach your arms forward, elbows touch. Inhale, head down. This is the last breath in the first set. Spine a little longer, elbows a little higher, lungs a little fuller. Suck your stomach in, breathe deep, full lungs. Exhale, head up, take your time. Eyes open, hips forward, legs locked, stomach in. Keep exhaling, push, squeeze, elbows touch. Change, arms down, you can roll out your shoulders, your head. So we do two of almost everything in this style of yoga. Second set might be a little bit more familiar. Maybe you can breathe deeper. So feet still together, weight in the heels. Interlock your ten fingers, cross your thumbs, and glue your knuckles underneath your chin. Maybe opposite thumb, pinky finger on top. Squeeze your thighs. Squeeze your butt. Grow taller out of the base of your spine. And begin inhale, head down and arms up, breathing in through the nose against the back of the throat, creating a little bit of a vibration, snoring sensation. Exhale, head up, use your throat muscles. Think of your throat like a valve, constricted, breathe slower, longer. Exhale more, elbows touch. Inhale, head down for one, two, three, four, five, six, full lungs. Exhale, head up, six, five, four, three, two, elbows touch, one. Inhale, head down, use the full six seconds to inhale. Slowly bring your chin down as you lift your chest up. Exhale, head up, use the full six seconds to exhale. Synchronize your breath with your body movements, elbows touch when your lungs are empty. Inhale, head down, starting to become a little bit more aware of the body. Keep the weight in your heels. Notice if you're rocking back and forth or side to side. Exhale, head up, weight stays in your heels and just your head drops back, so no backward bending. Keep shoulders over hips, hips over heels, weight in the heels. Inhale, head down. So again, just the neck and arms are moving. Keep a nice chest up, elbows up, stomach in, full lungs. Exhale, head up, eyes open so you don't get dizzy. Look way, way, way back. Squeeze palms, wrists, forearms, elbows together. Inhale, head down. I'll do two with you. Full lungs. Exhale, head up. Lungs empty. Inhale, head down. Elbows up. Exhale, head up. Elbows touch. Inhale, head down. Let's do two more breaths in the second set. Look straight ahead, chin down. Can you bring your elbows back as well as up? Exhale, head up. Can you grow taller even as you exhale? Slowly tilt your head back. 
Stretch your arms forward, exhale a little bit more than you think you can, empty your lungs. Inhale, head down, last breath in the second set, deepest breath of your life when your lungs are totally full. Surprise yourself, take in one more sip of air. Exhale, head up, take your time, let everything go through the exhale breath, any worries, any cares, let them go, be here now, elbows touch. Change, arms down, curl out your shoulders, your head. We'll continue with half moon pose with um, hands to feet pose. Ardha Chandrasana with Pada Svasana. Keep your feet together. Inhale your arms over your head sideways, palms together. For this, interlock your fingers, release your index fingers, cross your thumbs, think Charlie's angel's hands, stretch up out of your waist, and bend right and left, right and left. Every time you pass through the middle, reach up a little taller like you're trying to touch the ceiling. You wanna feel tremendous stretching feeling on both sides of your body, all the way up to your fingertips. When you can't stretch anymore, stop in the middle for half moon pose. So bring the weight into your heels and push your hips a little forward, hips and pelvis open to the front here. Suck your stomach in, upper body back. Try to touch your biceps to your ears. The trick is your grip strength, squeeze your palms together. Inhale, breathing, stretch up, out of your waist. Try to touch the ceiling, absolutely straight line. Slowly bend your body to the right. Without bending elbows and knees, continuously push your hips to the left beyond your flexibility. You're trying to create a tremendous stretching feeling in the left side of your body all over, inside out, bones to skin, fingers to toes. Just remember it's the first posture of the day and there's no rush. Know where you have to be. Nothing you have to prove to yourself or to anybody else. All you have to do is breathe in and out through your nose. Make your breath your number one priority in class. If you ever find that you're holding your breath or panting through the mouth, maybe slow down and ease up. Once you can breathe, focus more on form than alignment. So notice if the weight's in your toes, bring the weight back into your heels, contract your thighs, your glutes, and push your hips a little forward. Pull your belly in, lean your upper body back. Push your left hip forward so your two hips stay in line. Bring your right shoulder forward. Open your chest like a flower petal blooming. Maybe get a little deeper at the end. Come down, push and push and push. Change, inhale to come up. So reset, hips forward, arms back, squeeze your palms together, stretch up, and slowly bend your body to the left in a straight line. Without bending elbows or knees, continuously push your hips to the right beyond your flexibility, creating a tremendous stretching feeling in the right side body, but don't collapse. Lift your chin, lift your chest, see your whole throat visible uh, in the front mirror. And if you don't have a mirror in front of you, just keep the chin away from your chest as if you could put like a grapefruit between your chin and your chest. So it'll help you breathe a little bit more and it'll help align the spine, the arms, and the legs. Um, also just to note that I'm not mirroring you. So when I say um, bring your hands to the left, it might look like I'm bringing them to the right. That's just something to keep in mind if my words and how I look aren't quite adding up in your head, right? I'm not mirroring you. Okay, so focusing on alignment, weight back in the heels, contract your thighs and push your hips a little forward. Suck your stomach in, upper body back. So push your right hip forward to get your two hips in line. Now bring your left shoulder forward, right shoulder back, so two shoulders stay in line. Keep a nice open chest. If it feels all right, get a little deeper at the end, come down. Push and push and push. Change, inhale to come up. First back bend of the day. Take a deep breath, full lungs, keep your eyes open, and at first just work on relaxing your head all the way back, so look for the floor behind you. Keep the weight in your heels, contract your thighs, your glutes, and bring your arms back with your ears. Try to touch the wall behind you, whole spine, backward bending from coccyx to the neck, lower back, middle back, and upper back. Bend your total spine backward bending. Try to fall down backwards, maximum weight in your heels. Inhale, breathing, push stomach, thighs, hips, everything forward and bring your arms back. Look back, fall back, way back, go back, more back. Change, inhale to come up, stretch up. Exhale, bend your knees, go down, pull your belly in, put your hands on the floor and then go for a walk. Let your head hang heavy, move your hips, shake your head. This is a U-turn from back bending to forward folding. At the beginning of class, your spine might not be quite warmed up yet. Move your hips to get your lower back nice, relaxed, comfortable, easy, flexible. Um, particularly anytime we're folding forward in a non-heated room, take it easy, listen to your body. Your hips, your back, and your hamstrings might not be quite warmed up as you're used to in a hot room. Make sure to pull your belly in to protect the lower back. So hands to feet, pose potastasana. Bend your knees, touch stomach to thighs, chest to knees. And at first, just see if you can grab the backs of your calves. Notice how my elbows are bending. If it's easy to grab at your calves, see if you can slide your fingers underneath your heels. Step on all 10 fingers so little fingers touch side by side. Remember, knees can stay bent. You want to touch stomach to thighs, 
touch your chest to your knees and then drop your head. See if you can touch your face to your shins below your knees so no room for light and air between the upper and lower body. Pull on your heels, pull your weight forward into your toes and gently lift your hips up. Stretch your upper body down through the lower spine to the floor. Pulling is the object of stretching. You're trying to create a tremendous stretching feeling on the back of your body, all over, inside out, bones to skin, fingers to toes with a smiling, happy face. It's kind of poetic. Pull on your heels, push your big toes down, lift your hips up, stretch your spine. A change, come up with a straight spine, but knees can bend. So you want to hinge at the hips. Nice. Arms down and you stand a little bit taller, right? That's the whole goal, just standing a little taller. So second set, right away, feet together. Inhale your arms over your head sideways, palms together. Interlock fingers, release index fingers, cross thumbs. Squeeze your thighs, your butt, and push your hips a little forward. Upper body back, touch your biceps to your ears. Inhale, breathing, stretch up out of your waist. Try to touch the ceiling. Absolutely straight lines, slowly bend to the right as you push your hips to the left. So make sure you're not collapsing. You wanna like be toning the right side of your body, armpit away from the hip, weight in your heel the whole time. As you're ready, use your right hand to pull your left hand to the top right corner of the room. Push your left heel into the floor. Push your right heel into the floor, stomach in. Push your hips a little bit further to the left beyond your flexibility. Come down, push, push, push. Good, change, slowly come up. Press your hips forward, upper body back, squeeze palms together, stretch up, and slowly drop to the left as you push your hips to the right. So anytime the elbows or knees start to bend or the hands start to separate, come up a little bit, squeeze your palms together, touch your biceps to your ears, and keep the weight in your heels. Notice if you're gritting your jaw, relax your jaw, seal your lips, focus straight ahead. Bring the weight back into your heels, hips a little forward, upper body back, keep the chin and chest proud. Press your right hip forward, get your two hips in line, bring your left shoulder forward, open your chest like a flower, petal blooming, maybe get a little deeper at the end, come down, push and push and push. Change, inhale to come up, second heart opener, so it's a little bit hard for me to talk and to do at the same time. So um, take a deep breath, full lungs, keep your eyes open, relax your head all the way back, look through the floor behind you, and then bring your arms back with your ears, try to touch the wall behind you. Full spine backward bending, whole front of the body stretching. If your knees are bending, ease up a little bit, lock your legs, keep the weight in your heels, squeeze your butt, and to go deeper, just like point to the wall behind you and try to touch it. So bring your arms back for 10 seconds. And when you're ready, change. Inhale to come up, stretch up. Exhale, bend your knees, hinge your hips, arms of your ears, put your hands on the floor, and then go for another walk with your hips, shake your head. So second set, notice what's a little bit more loose, what's still a little tight, there's no right or wrong. One of the big gifts of this yoga is it's just an opportunity to check in. So there's nothing like inherently bad about being a little bit tight in your hamstrings, right? But sometimes we don't even notice. And this yoga is just giving us an opportunity to check in, not just with the body, but with the mind. To notice if your mind is starting to wander. I invite you to be here now. Second set, hands to feet pose, bend your knees, grab your heels from behind, step on all two fingers, little baby fingers touch, bend your elbows back, stomach to thighs, chest to knees, drop your head, Touch your face to your shins and pull. Roll your weight into your toes and lift your hips up. So eventually the legs will lock, but it's most important that the upper body is touching the lower body the whole time and you pull, almost like bicep curls, right? Pull on your heels, roll your weight into your toes, lift your hips up, stretch your spine down. One day locking the legs doesn't have to be today. Good, change, come up with a straight spine. Knees can bend, keep your arms with your ears. Go team, arms down, and you let that one go. Awkward, Ukatasana. Step your right foot to the right, six inches, hip width distance, not too big of a step. Insides of your feet, perfectly parallel like 11s. Arms up, parallel to the floor, tricep muscles tight, nothing loose or hanging. Suck your stomach in, bend your knees, and sit down into a chair. Feet flat position, spine straight to begin with, 100% of your body weight in your heels. Sit down, halfway only, hips into a chair. Suck your stomach in, lean your upper body back, depression to abdominal wall, contraction to abdominal muscles, suck it in, Hold it in tight. Bring a little bit more weight back into your heels. Sit a little bit lower. Lift your chin up, chest up, change. Inhale to come up. Keep your arms there. Press your hips a little forward. Now come up maximum on your tiptoes like a ballerina. Stretch the crown of your head up to the ceiling. Bend your knees and sit down. 
Rather than sticking your butt out, tuck your tailbone under, like push the hips a little forward and lean back. Try to touch your head and hips to an imaginary wall. Lift your heels a little higher, knees a little higher, sit down into a chair, but don't sit below a chair. Change. Inhale to come up, keep your arms there. Last part, heels down. Squeeze your knees together, and this time, let your heels come just a little bit off the floor. Suck your stomach in and slowly sit down. Now, there's no obligation to sit all the way down. Stop when you want, or slowly slide your back down an imaginary wall. Stop when you're a half inch off your heels. Squeeze your knees together and tilt your kneecaps towards the floor. So there's a half inch gap between your hips and your heels. Thighs parallel to the floor, arms parallel to the thighs, spine perfectly straight from the side, looks like you're holding a box. Push your big toes down, lift your chest up, and change. Slowly push the floor away from you. Good stuff. Heels down, right foot back, arms down, relax your shoulders, your jaw. And second set, step your right foot to the right. Not too big of a step, it's hip bone distance. Keep the insides of your feet parallel. I'll show you second set from the side. So insides of the feet parallel, arms up parallel to the floor, tricep muscles tight. Suck your stomach in, bend your knees, and sit down into a chair. So for the first part, you wanna stick your butt out and keep all of the weight in your heels. Sit down a little bit lower, hips into a chair. Look down, if you can't see your big toes, you're probably coming forward too much, right? Bring the weight back into your heels, hips back to take pressure away from the knees. Suck the stomach in, start to lean the upper body back. Notice if your shoulders are tensing up, roll the shoulders back and down, lift your chin up, chest up, lean back, fall back, way back, try to fall down backwards at the end, change. Inhale to come up, keep your arms there. Now for the second part, push your hips forward so your back stays nice and flat. Now come up all the way on your tippy, tippy toes. That's a technical term, tippy, tippy toes. Lift your heels up, squeeze your butt, bend your knees, and sit down. So we're flirting with balance. And this is also a nice opportunity to identify the difference between fatigue and pain. Muscles might shake, it's okay to fatigue, but you're never going to a point of pain or a point where you can't breathe through your nose. Change, inhale to come up. Last part, heels down, squeeze your knees, thighs together, and let your heels come just a little bit off the floor. Belly in, chest up, slowly sit down. The slower you do, whoop, the better you do. Stop when you're a half inch off your heel or when you want to. So if you're like leaning back on your heels, squeeze your knees, come up a little bit, knees, thighs together, shoulders down, spine straight, change. Slowly push the floor away from you. Very nice, heels down, right foot back, arms down. Next is Eagle Pose Garasana. And remember, I'm not mirroring you. So look at your hands, identify which hand is right, which hand is left, don't mix them up. Eagle Pose, inhale your arms over your head. Exhale, right arm under left arm, right elbow under left elbow. You have a couple options, you can grab your shoulders, you can interlock your fingers, eventually hands in prayer. Make sure thumbs towards your nose. If your pinkies are towards your nose, Flip your palms again, thumbs towards the nose, pinkies away from your face. Okay, bend your knees, sit down into a chair. Stay down there and bring your right leg as high as possible over your left leg. Cross your legs each other, twist like ropes, try to hook your right foot behind your left calf muscle, maybe see all five toes visible. And if your foot's not wrapping today, that's okay. Just point your toes where you want them to go, never force your body. If your foot's wrapping and it starts to, the foot is coming out, sit down more. If you're losing your balance, arch your upper body back. Bring your knees to the right, upper body to the left, twist like ropes, lift your chin and chest. Good, change, feet together, inhale your arms over your head. Exhale, left arm under your right arm, left under the right, remember you can grab shoulders, you can interlock fingers, one day hands in prayer, thumbs towards the face. Bend your knees, sit down into a chair. Stay down there and bring your left leg as high as possible over your right leg. Cross twist and breathe slowly in and out through the nose. Now right away, just as a note, we are not symmetrical. This side maybe feels the same or maybe it feels wildly different. Maybe you know why, maybe it's like an injury or surgery, maybe you never realized that you know, your right shoulder is like way tighter than your left shoulder until now. And again, this yoga is just an opportunity to check in. If it feels okay, sit down a little bit lower, keep the weight in your heel, pull your elbows down, suck your stomach in, lean your upper body, Good, change feet together, inhale your arms over your head, second set, exhale, right arm under left arm, palms together, thumbs towards your face. Pull your elbows down, one day fingers go below your nose for this version of evil. Bend your knees, sit down, 
lean back and bring your right leg up and over your left leg, cross twist, breathe slowly in and out through the nose. So notice if your hands are way to one side of your face, try to draw the hands back to the center and then even out the shoulders. Same thing, notice if your knees are like twisting way to one side of center. So you wanna try to squeeze everything in the center line of your body, stacking wrists over elbows, elbows over knees, knees over ankle, weight in the heel. Sit down more, arch your upper body back. Good, change feet together, inhale your arms over your head, last one, finish strong, exhale, left arm, under right arm, palms together, thumbs towards your nose, bend your knees, sit down first, stay down there, and bring your left leg up and over your right leg, cross twist, breathe slowly, in and out through your nose. So if your hands are together, notice if your wrists are bending, try to straighten the wrists. And if your foot is wrapping, try to eliminate the gap between your ankle and calf muscles. So point your toes down, sit a little bit lower, keep the weight in your heel, Suck your stomach in, pull your elbows down, arch your upper body back at the end. Good, change feet together, inhale your arms over your head. Exhale, arms down, party time, grab a sip of water. Everybody's doing great. Cheers, my friends. So in this style of yoga, this is like the only official water break we have, but um, remember if you ever need to take water, take water. Um, if you ever need to take a break, Take a break, right? So fun. And then when you feel good, hop back in. So for the next three postures, we balance on one leg. It's the balancing series. And if you fall out, don't give up, just hop back in. So make that promise to yourself that you'll always end on one leg. Okay. So we'll start with standing head to knee pose, Dande Mana Janu Shirasana. We're gonna round the spine and squeeze the spine. Shift your weight to your left leg, contract your left thigh muscles, lock your left leg. Lift your right leg up and flex your right toes back to your face. You're welcome to stay here. Make sure your abdominal wall is pulled in to protect your back. As you're ready, start to round forward and see if you can pick up your right foot. All 10 fingers interlock, nice tight grip, don't lose the grip. You're welcome to stay here in um, the setup the whole time. Make sure stomach and standing leg locked. If you've been coming for a while and you know your left leg will stay locked, no bend, no wobble, inhale breathing slowly, gently lift your right leg up until it's exactly parallel to the floor. No higher, no lower, standing leg locked. Take a deep breath, kick your heel forward, flex your toes back, you're training your Achilles to stretch. If your standing leg is bending or wobbling, posture hasn't started, lock your left leg. If both legs lock, from the side, legs make an upside down L. Like Linda, start to bend your elbows in and down. Touch elbows to calf muscles, stomach in. Keep bending your elbows down, stomach in. One day, elbows go below the calf muscles. Lock your leg, lock your leg, lock your leg. Good, change, slowly, reverse, out. Wonderful, shift your weight to your right leg, and I'll show you from the side for the other one. So shift your weight to your right leg, contract your inner right thigh as well as your outer right thigh, and lift your left leg up. Try to evenly distribute your body weight on your right foot the whole time. So try, notice if the big toe is coming off the floor, root down through the big toe as well as your heel. You're welcome to stay here with your stomach in as you're ready, slowly round forward and see if you can pick up your left foot. All 10 fingers interlocked. From start to finish, lock your standing leg. So there's no bend in your standing leg, but for my super flexible folks, it's also not hyperextension. You want hip over knee over the ankle. So right leg should be solid, concrete, one piece, lamp post, unbroken. You have no knee. When you're ready, slowly lift your left leg up. And then it's a real kick, like kick your heel forward, push your hip forward, flex your toes back. You're training your Achilles to stretch. Keep contracting your right thigh. If both legs lock, you should feel tremendous stretching feeling on the backs of both hamstrings. Then bend elbows down. Touch elbows to calf muscles. One day elbows go below the calf muscles. Shoulders down. Heel forward. Lock your leg. Lock your leg. Lock your leg. Change. Slowly reverse out. Good. You can put your hands on your back and do a little back bend or a knee bend. Cool. Second set. Shift your weight to your left leg. Contract your inner thigh as well as your outer thigh. It helps to squeeze your butt cheek as well. Lift your right leg up, pull your belly in, round forward and get a good grip, all 10 fingers, even your thumbs under your foot. You're welcome to stay here. When you're ready, lift your right leg up, breathe through your nose. If both legs lock, puff up your chest and bend elbows down. If elbows go below your calf muscles, then still you can balance comfortably. Slowly tuck your chin to your chest and put your forehead on your
when you're ready, slowly reverse out. Awesome. Okay, last one, trip your weight to your right leg, wipe your hands if you need to, lift your left leg up. So contract your right butt cheek, contract all the muscles in your standing leg to keep your hip over your knee, over your ankle. So you're using your muscle strength to stabilize the joints in the standing leg. Round forward, pick up your left foot, all 10 fingers interlocked. Concentrate, meditate, don't forget to have fun. Here we go, lift your left leg up. Remember if you fall out, promise yourself you'll hop back in. If both legs lock, puff up your chest and bend elbows down. Keep your belly in, elbows in and down. Elbows go below your calf muscles. Slowly tuck your chin to your chest. Heel forward, toes back. Touch your forehead to your knee. And when you're ready, change. Take your time coming out. Very nice, okay. That was a forward curl. Next, we do a back bend called standing bow pulling pose, or Dandaya Mana Dhanurasana. Um, if you've not done standing bow pulling pose, the grip can be a little bit confusing. I'll give you a few options. You're welcome to just grab your foot from the outside. Know that eventually, we'll walk our hand around and grab the foot from the inside, so the shoulder's rotating out. What you don't want is to rotate your shoulder in, and grab like this, right? So two options, you can grab from the outside or grab from the inside. And if that's confusing to you, please just message me after class and I will explain it more, okay? So you can go pulling pose, feet together, bring your right hand up, palm faces the ceiling, bring your hand out to the right, reach back without turning or twisting your wrist. Keep your shoulder open. Just pick up the inside of your right ankle at the ankle bone. And again, if that doesn't make sense, just grab the outside of your ankle. Bring your left arm up, arm with your ear, knees close together to start, knees touching if you can. Take a breath, lift your chin, stretch up a little taller, and when you're ready, slowly charge your body forward. As you reach your left arm forward, simultaneously kick your right leg back and up. At first, just find a place where you can balance and breathe. Keep your standing leg muscles contracted, point your right toes. Once you can balance and breathe, come down. Bring the body down and the leg up. See the foot come over the top of your head. So from the side, two heels in line. Kick back and up, two shoulders in line. Chin touch the shoulder, shoulder blade, scapula coming out of the body. Kicking and stretching should be equal. Simultaneous, 50-50. The harder you kick, you can balance forever. So kick really hard. Bring your body down more, leg up more. Charge your body forward. Kick, kick, kick. Good, change. Slowly come up, feet together arms down. Again, it's really normal to fall out of these postures, so if you fall out, just hop back in. Bring your left hand up. Palm faces the ceiling. Bring your hand out to the left. Reach back without turning or twisting your wrist or shoulder. Pick up the inside of your left ankle at the ankle bone. Bring your right arm up. Notice if your arm is way away from your ear. Try to touch your arm to your ear. Lift your chin, and if you're able, bring your knees together. Take a deep breath, stretch up one more inch towards the ceiling, and when you're ready, slowly charge your body forward as you kick your left leg back and up. Again, kicking and stretching equal, simultaneous, 50-50. The harder you kick, you can balance forever, so kick really hard. Like, push your left foot into your left hand. All five fingers together, thumb with your index finger, palm of your right hand faces the floor, get your right arm exactly parallel to the floor, tricep tight, Standing leg locked. Get a back bend here. So lift your chin and chest, relax your belly, and when you're ready, come down. Body down more, heel up more, keep the chest lifted, reach the right shoulder forward, try to touch shoulder and chin together. Kick, kick, kick. Good, change slowly. Kick yourself out, feet together, arms down, take a slow inhale to your nose. Slow exhale to your nose. Try again, second set, bring your right hand up, bring it out to the right, reach back. Without turning or twisting your wrist, pick up the inside of your right ankle, have the ankle bone, knees together. Left arm up, arm with your ear, whoop, lift your chin, lift your chest, stretch up a little taller, and slowly kick, stretch, and breathe. That's all you have to do. Kick into your hand, stretch forward towards the mirror, breathe in and out to your nose. Notice if one hip is like way higher than the other, Try to even out the hips so it's the chest opening, spine twisting, rather than hips compensating for a tight back. So shoulders stretching apart, but hips stay relatively in line. Lock your left leg, come down, point your right toes, chin up, kick, kick, kick. 
Good, change, kick yourself out. Last one, I'll show you from the side. Bring your left hand up, bring it out to the left. Reach back, pick up the inside of your left ankle, at the ankle bone, right arm up, arm with your ear, lift your chin, stretch up a little taller and slowly kick. Stretch and breathe. So eventually, left foot directly on top of the right foot. Whoops, so two heels in line. <laughs> into my TV, two heels in line, two shoulders in line, left hip down. Bring the body down more, leg up more, slide the right shoulder forward, touch the wall in front of you, kick, kick, kick. Good change, slowly kick out. All right, go team. Come to the back of your mat and tell Tula Dandasana, balancing stick. So we went from a longer posture to a shorter one. This one's only 10 seconds. Yay, feet together, inhale your arms over your head sideways, palms together, interlock fingers, release index fingers, cross your thumbs, bring your head and arms back, stretch up, step your right foot forward, lock both legs, point your left toes and slowly tilt like a seesaw. So arms, body, head, legs, everything parallel to the floor. So from the side, body makes a T like Tom, not a broken umbrella. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Good, change, left foot down, right foot back, lean back, chin up. Step your left foot forward. Evenly distribute your body weight on your left foot. Lift your right foot off the floor and slowly to like a seesaw. So you want to keep your back flat as if there's a board strapped to your back. Arms with your ears the whole time. Point your right toes. Charge your body forward. Shoulder blade, scapula coming out of the body. Stretch. Good. Change. Right foot down. The left foot back. Arms down. Take a breath. Good step, second set, feet together right away. Inhale your arms over your head, you can do it. Interlock fingers, release index fingers, cross thumbs, lean back, chest up. Step your right foot forward, lock both legs, point your left toes and tilt. So think like your body is the rope in a human tug of war. Charge your body forward, stretch back equally. Stretch, body down, stretch, heel up, stretch. Change, left foot down, right foot back. Last one, here we go, you can do it. Step your left foot forward, squeeze your inner thighs together, point your right toes and tilt. So notice if your right hip is lifting up, try to keep your two hips in line, spiral your inner right thigh up, drop your right pinky toe down, lift your heel up, push your palms together, stretch. Good, change, right foot down, left foot back, arms down, enough of that. Come to the top of your mat, you have two options for the next three postures, we'll balance on two separate legs, it's called the separate leg series, very original I know. You're welcome um, to face me, or you can also face the long side of your mat. So just a couple options there. We'll start with standing separate leg stretching. Dande Amana Vipapapada Hashimotanasana. So I'll show you the first one from the side. You're going to inhale your arms over your head. Exhale, step your right foot to the right. A big step, like four feet minimum. Arms down parallel to the floor. Look down. Turn your toes towards each other so your feet are pigeon-toed. If you have active sciatica, keep the insides of your feet parallel like 11s. Otherwise, turn your toes in. Toes and heels out, lock your legs, lift your chest, swan dive forward, you wanna keep your hips over your heels all the way down. Okay, so ideally, you're gonna grab your heels, stepping on your fingers, you're gonna bend your elbows and touch your forehead to the floor. For some of us, that's not gonna to happen today, and that's okay. Lots of options, you can start with your hands on the floor in front of you, or grab the outsides of your feet, but some things to be careful of. You wanna keep the weight in your toes, so everybody roll forward, hips up. If you feel the weight in your heels and your knees are bending, roll forward into the toes and now lift your hips up. Contract your quadricep muscles, lock your legs. First the leg stretching and the hip stretching, lower spine stretching, full spine stretching, whole body stretching. Three, 60 degree angle stretching, coccyx to toes, coccyx to forehead. Try to touch your forehead to the floor in between your feet. And if your forehead's not yet touching the floor, maybe try taking a little bit of a bigger step. Open your step more, roll forward, hips up, full stretch. Good, change, slowly come up, push the hips forward, lean back, step your right foot back, arms over your head, and arms down. So for a lot of postures, um, they are made easier or more difficult simply based on our body proportions. It has nothing to do with physical ability. So for me, it might look like super easy that I'm touching my forehead to the floor. It's just because I have a long torso, right? So if you know that you have long legs and a short torso, and you're like, no way, can I ever touch my forehead to the floor? That's okay, take a bigger step and make sure to keep the weight in your toes the whole time. So it's more about 
lengthening the hamstrings and lengthening the spine. Maybe one day the forehead touches, but depending on your body proportions, that might be like really accessible or really hard. That's nothing to do with like your ability, right? It's just the proportion of like your spine to your legs. I digress, second set stretching. I'll show you this from, from the front. So inhale your arms over your head, exhale, step your right foot to the right, big step. Longer legs, shorter spine, bigger step. If you have a long spine and short legs, maybe a smaller step. Turn your toes in, heels out, chest up, swan dive forward. Lead with your heart all the way down. If you don't have a heart, lead with your lower ribs all the way down. Keep coming back to yoga. You will cry eventually. So if you can, grab your heels. If that's not happening today, no problem onto the outsides of your feet or start with your hands on the floor in front of you. But everybody, remember to roll forward, push your big toes down. If you can, grab your elbows. Try to bend elbows back behind you and elbows to caps, shoulders to ceiling, belly button spine. Everybody roll forward. If your forehead's touching the floor already, take a smaller step. If not, take a little bit of a bigger step and then contract your quadricep muscles. Lift your thighs up to the ceiling, pull, stretch, roll forward, touch your forehead to the floor in between your feet. Good, change, slowly come up, hips forward. Good stuff, right foot back, arms over your head, arms down, sweet. So next is triangle trikonasana. Bikram's version of triangle is a little bit different from other styles of yoga, so that's just something um, to note. This is the biggest step all of us will take in class, right? It's like the biggest step we do in this series, you want a wing, span, step. Here we go, triangle trikonasana. You're welcome to do it on the length of your mat, I'm going to show you in profile. So inhale your arms over your head. Exhale, step your right foot to the right. Big steps. So you want like your wrists under your ankles, a wingspan step. Push your hips forward, lean your upper body back, and turn your right foot out. For this version of triangle, bend your right leg, remember I'm not mirroring you, and sit down. Eventually, right thigh bicep will be parallel to the floor with your knee over the ankle, but not beyond the ankle. So my knee's going beyond my ankle. I'm actually going to take an even bigger step. Press your left hip a little forward, sit down more, lean back, and move your arms at the same time. Right elbow in front of the knee, left arm up to the ceiling, look up towards the ceiling, stretch your left shoulder up, and breathe in and out through your nose. As you're ready, push your left hip forward and down, push your right knee back with the help of your elbow, turn, twist upper body back, lock your left leg, keep your whole left foot, even your pinky toe, flat on the floor. Change. Rotate your arms. Turn your right toes in, left toes out. This will be much more pleasant if your heels are in line. So just make sure your heels are in line, not crisscross. Inhale, bend your left leg lunge. Now, if your step is too short, your knee's gonna go beyond your ankle, which can hurt your knee. And also, like, you just can't sit down very low. Taking a bigger step will help you sit down more. So eventually, left thigh bicep parallel to the floor. And you can turn your right hip forward if it helps you sit down more. So push the hips forward. Lean back and move your arms. Left elbow in front of the knee, stretch down. Aim your fingers between your big and second toe. But here's the tricky part. Don't touch the floor. Don't push any weight on the floor. Come up, just the elbow in front of the knee, and then look up. Try to touch chin and shoulder together. Reach your right arm up, stretch your left arm down. Push your right hip forward, push your left knee back, turn, twist upper body back, lock your right leg, keep your right foot flat on the floor. Change, rotate your arms. Turn your left toes in, right foot back to the place, arms over your head, arms down, take a slow inhale through your nose. Slow exhale to your nose. Let's do second set, inhale your arms over your head, exhale, step your right foot to the right, big step, push your hips forward, lean back, turn your right foot out, bend your right leg, lunge, knee over the ankle, not beyond the ankle, so sit down for it, lean back, move your arms, aim your fingers towards your big and second toe, just raising the floor, look up towards the ceiling, use your triceps, reach your left arm up, stretch your right arm down, try to sit down more, so left hip down in line with right hip, sit down more, stretch up more, turn, twist upper body back, lock your left leg, left foot flat on the floor, suck your stomach in, change, push your right heel on the floor, right toes in, left toes out, check that your heels are in line, Inhale, bend your left leg, lunge. You can bend the knee a couple times, so sit down more, lean back, and move your arms. If you feel like your feet are sliding apart, try to squeeze your heels back together. Feet stay in place, but that's the inner thigh strength that we want to engage. Try to keep one diagonal line from your ankle all the way to the crown of your head. Stretch your arms apart, drop your right hip down, lock your right leg, right foot flat on the floor. Change. Rotate your arms. Left toes in. Right foot back. Arms over your head. Arms down. Very nice. Next is standing separate leg head to knee. 
Dandayamana Bikapta Pada Janusharasana. So in this next posture, we're going to try and round our spine so much that we touch our forehead to our knee. Pretty cool. Now again, you're welcome to do it on the length of your mat, but I'm going to do it facing you. Okay, head to knee pose. Inhale your arms over your head, palms together. Just cross your thumbs. Step your right foot to the right. This time like three to four feet. Still a pretty big step. Pivot on your heels either to the back of your mat or to one side of the room, and then turn your back foot in. So left toes turn in. Push your hips forward one, two, three, four, five times beyond your flexibility. Two hips in one line, two heels in a line. Backside foot makes a 45 degree angle. Stretch up, tuck your chin to your chest, and you go down. Chin tucked to chest, slap your stomach in, touch your forehead to your knee, front side compression, throat choked, eyes open, breathing, normal. Now, if you're looking at your forehead or you're looking at your knee right now and you're going, no way, just take a bigger step, tuck your chin to your chest and bend your front leg more. Try to bring knee and head together, front side compression, throat choked, eyes open, breathing, normal. Push your forehead into your knee, lock both legs, hands together, change, slowly and curl, left hip forward, arms with your ears, full stop at the top. Pivot on your heels, pivot on your heels, so you're either facing the front of your mat or the right side of the room. Now in the transition, my heels became crisscross and my feet also got closer together. So I'm gonna uncross my heels, I'm gonna take a bigger step. I'm gonna push my right hip forward one, two, three, four, five times until my hips and armpits are square. Stretch up, tuck your chin to your chest and go down. Round your spine like an angry cat. Chin, tuck to chest, right hip forward, try to touch your forehead to your front knee. Again, you can take a bigger step, you can turn your back foot in a little bit more, and you can also bend your front leg, front side compression, throat choked, eyes open, breathing normal, stretch all 10 fingers, just be on your big and second toe, left hip up, right hip down, two hips in line. Push your forehead into your knee, lock both legs, hands together, change, slowly uncurl, right hip forward, right shoulder forward, full stop at the top. Good, pivot on your heels, right foot back, arms down. Notably, although stretching pose is easier with a long torso, head to knee pose is harder, right? You have more real estate to round over one femur bone. So um, another note is like, it all kind of evens out. One posture might be harder for you based on your proportions or your ability, but there's always that other posture that's a little bit easier for you, right? And that's like part of the trade off too, as we all have that like posture that we naturally shine out and we all have that posture that like, ooh, we work for years to get a little bit deeper into, right? So it all kind of comes out in a wash, I think. Second set, head to knee pose. Inhale your arms over your head, palms together. Exhale, step your right foot to the right, three to four feet. Pick up your heels, face one side of the room. Press your left hip forward, right shoulder back. Stretch up, tuck your chin to your chest and you go down. So sometimes it's easy to look at somebody and be like, oh, they make it look easy, I could never do that or like they just must be naturally gifted. Touch your forehead to your knee, but there's no such thing as a yoga savant. This is not like chess or mathematics. Anytime you see somebody do something cool, um, they probably worked really hard at it. Bring maximum weight to your right front leg, right hip up, left hip down, two hips in line. Try to walk your hands back together. Push your forehead into your knee, lock both legs, change, slowly uncurl as if you're dragging your forehead up your thigh, your chest, head up very fast. Good, pick up your toes, pivot on your heels 180 degrees, and you can uncross your feet, you can take a bigger step, press your hips forward, stretch up, belly in, tuck your chin to your chest, go down. Can you look at your belly button all the way down? You cannot see your left foot all the way down. Chin tuck to chest, try to keep your hands together for a balance challenge, and then touch your forehead to your knee. As you look towards your belly button, notice if one hip is way higher than the other. For most of us, rotate the right hip forward, spiral your inner right thigh back, left hip up, belly in. Push your forehead into your knee, lock both legs, hands together, change, slowly uncurl, arms with your ears, press your palms together on the way up, head up last. Good, pick up your toes, pivot on your heels, right foot back, arms down. High five. Two more postures, and then we're on the floor for the rest of class. Tree pose and toe stance. These are the hip opening postures. Shift your weight to your left leg, lock your left leg for tree pose to dasana, and lift your right leg up. This version of tree pose is often called 
standing half lotus. So we're training our hips and knees to sit in lotus pose. At first, your foot can be on top of your shin, your knee, your thigh. Eventually, hold on to the foot from underneath the foot, heel to costume. You're welcome to hold on to your knee with your hand. As you're ready, slowly, gently let your right knee drop down and back into a half lotus shape, but please never force your knees. Um, this is meant to be a hip posture, not a knee posture. So if your knee is in pain, ease up a little bit. You're opening the hips, not the knees. And bring your right hand up to the center of your chest. And if you can balance left hand up, if your foot falls even a little bit, I'm just gonna continue to hold on to my foot with my hand. Um, if your butt's sticking out, like push the hips forward, lean back and stretch up. Good, change. Slowly lower your right leg down. Shift your weight to your right leg, contract your right thigh, lock your right leg, and lift your left leg up. So for those of you um, with knee issues who feel like they can't get deep into this posture, I'll show you a trick. You can interlace your fingers at the shin and lift your knee up, almost like when removing pose that we're gonna do in a little bit. Now touch your heel to your costume. You wanna keep your knee in line with your hip. So rather than the knee going out to the side, you're gonna keep your left knee in line with your hip and now just let it drop down. It's the hips opening, not the knee. So knee and hips stay in line. Again, rather than the knee winging out, hip and knee would stay in line. So that's one way to safely get into the posture, moving the hips rather than the knee. Remember, you can have your foot on your shin, your knee, your thigh. And as another reminder, like we're not symmetrical, right? You can bring your left hand up, and if you can balance their right hand up. So on the other side, sometimes I can get my foot to stay, but on this side, it slips a lot, right? Just a reminder, we're not symmetrical, that's okay, right? We're not butterflies, perfectly imperfect, it's all good. Just noticing, just breathing, stretch up, think about temporarily eliminating any curvature in your spine. Change, slowly left leg down. Next we do um, toe stand. You are welcome to do a second set of tree pose, especially if you have knee injuries, but know that the way that we get into toe stand um, is beginner friendly. So you're gonna shift your weight to your left leg and lift your right leg up. This time anywhere above the knee, anywhere on the thighs, right? If your foot's prone to slipping, you can hold on to your foot with your hand, otherwise bring both hands together. Pick a spot on the floor, don't move your eyes. If you're new, you're welcome to watch it first. Pull your belly in and you're gonna hinge at your hips. Um, sometimes with toe stand, people go down with a bent knee, but in this version, you want to put your hands on the floor first to take some weight away from the knee. You can even walk your hands towards the top of your mat. Lean forward, shoulders over wrists. Now lift your heel, bend your knee, sit down. So the weight is in your arms as you sit. If you can sit on your heel, walk your hands back to either sides of your hips and breathe. Left hand up, right hand up, elbows down, spine straight. Come a half and drop your heel, maybe. When you're ready, lower the hips. Place your hands on the floor first. So we're gonna reverse out, lift your hips up. Now you're welcome to just drop your right foot down and come up on two feet. Otherwise, to reverse out, push your hips forward to come up. Nice, and change, right leg down. Shift your weight to your right leg, walk your right leg, and lift your left leg up. I'll show you the other side from the side. So left leg up, if your foot's prone to sliding, Hold on to your foot, otherwise bring both hands together. So it helps with balance to pick one spot on the floor in front of you. Don't move your eyes, don't even blink. Pull your belly in and fold forward. So I'm going down with a straight leg, a contracted quadricep muscle. Once my hands touch the floor, walk your hands forward and lean forward, especially if you have tight knees. So all the weight should be in your arms right now. Lift your heel, keep leaning forward, bend your knees, sit down. No weight in the knee as you sit. Now walk your hands back to either sides of your hips. Eventually back flat, so spine straight. Left hand up, right hand up, elbows down, spine straight. Maybe come a half inch off your heel. And when you're ready, put your hands on the floor. Again, you can come up on two feet or to reverse out. Lift the hips first to straighten the leg. Once the uh, body weight is back in your quadricep muscle, then push your hips forward to come up so the weight's never on the knee. Good. Change. Left leg down, honor yourself in the front mirror, or just high five, fist bump, turn around, Savasana. Um, so we're on the floor for the rest of class. What a delight. So glad you guys are all here with me. I'm gonna lower my view. Okay, sweet. So Savasana or corpse pose. Turn so your head is to the front of your mat, feet to the back wall. Cool, okay. Bring your heels together. Let your toes fall open. Arms down, palms face the ceiling, eyes open, mouth closed. So Savasana is a um, 
specific posture the way that the others are. So heels together as best you can. Let your toes fall open. Bring your arms down close to your sides. Palms face the ceiling. Eyes open, mouth closed, breathing normal. So Vasana is a gas station. Let it fill you up. When your limbs are close together, your heart and lungs don't have to work very hard to pump fresh blood and oxygen through the body. It's truly restorative. And remember that this yoga is meant to be um, aerobic in the real sense of the word aerobics, right? Like you're breathing the whole time. So, you know, in a lot of workouts, it's like at a certain point we kind of lose our breath. But, and that's often how we get like lactic acid buildup, right? But in this yoga, we're always prioritizing breath above anything else. So let's take a few slow breaths together. Take a slow inhale through your nose. And a slow exhale through your nose. Slow inhale through your nose. Even slower exhale through your nose. Noticing any tension in the body. Take another slow inhale through your nose. As you exhale, just releasing down into the floor a little bit more. Let your shoulders and jaw soften. Feel the floor holding you up. We continue. Kavana Mutasana, when removing pose. Bend your right leg up. Interlock your 10 fingers. Grab your right shin just below the knee. Pull your knee out and down and hold. Avoid your rib cage. So this is part of the hip opening series, just like tree and toe that we did before the break. As you're ready, gently pull your right knee down a little bit more. So one day knee touches armpit, but it doesn't have to be today or tomorrow. Good, change, release, right leg down and left leg up. Interlock your 10 fingers, nice tight white knuckle grip, grab your left shin just below the knee. Pull your knee out and down and hold, completely avoid your rib cage. Right leg on the floor. If your right calf muscle doesn't naturally touch the floor, flex your right toes back to your face. Try to anchor two hips, two shoulders flat on the floor. Change, release, left leg down, and then both legs up. Grab your elbows each other, give yourself a really big hug for coming to class tonight. If you can't grab your elbows, no problem. Interlock your fingers, grab your forearms, you can um, just grab your knees with your hands, whatever works for you. Get compact and squeeze tight. Make sure two heels in line, side by side, not crisscross. When you line up your um, heels, you start to line up your hips and shoulders. In this version of winter moving pose, keep your head on the floor and just look down the center line of your body. Eventually, or in the future, when the bone joint skeletal system has improved, the whole spine from coccyx to the neck will be flat on the floor. Oh, you're already trained. Good. Change. Arms down and eyes open. Continue to breathe. Second set. Right leg up, interlock your ten fingers. Maybe other thumb, pinky finger on top, switch the grip. Pull your knee out and down and fold. So you want to put some pressure in the lower abdomen to massage your ascending colon. This posture is good for digestion. Pull down a little extra hard. And release, change, right leg down, hip flushes out. Left leg up, pull your knee out and down. So in this one, you're massaging your descending colon. Push the pads of your fingers into the backs of your hands to strengthen your grip. Release, change, left leg down, fingers flush out, and then both legs up. Grab your elbows each other and maybe opposite elbow on top. Squeeze knees together and down. You want to put maximum pressure on your lower abdomen, massaging your transverse colon. Um, this posture is called wind removing pose for a reason. It's great for um, relieving any bloating in your stomach. It's good for giving yourself a hug twice a day. And eventually the shoulders, the hips, even the neck spine will start to soften towards the floor, realigning your back. Change, arms down, eyes open. Next, we do a straight leg sit up. If you have any concerns about your back today, especially lower back pain, please skip the sit up. You'll just roll off to the side and meet us on your stomach, no problem. Otherwise, we'll do a sit up and I'll show you the first one from the side. You're gonna sit up by rounding your spine. So legs together, arms over your head, only cross your thumbs. Keep your arms with your ears. Flex your toes back towards your face. Take a breath. Stomach in, hold your breath, and sit up. 
Exhale, grab your big toes. Exhale, elbows to floor, forehead to knees. So every time you sit up, you really want to round the spine. Eventually, elbows to floor, forehead to knees. Great. Try and lie on your stomach for the spine strengthening series, starting with Cobra Bhujangasana, good for your lower lumbar spine. For this version of Cobra Pose, walk your hands back so your fingers are below your shoulders. Elbows should point up to the ceiling. Bring your feet together like a cobra's tail, toes, and heels touch. Walk your legs, squeeze your butts, look up, and lift. Stretch your upper body off the floor. Use 100% lower spine strength. Come up halfway only so elbows stay bent. They make an L, a 90 degree angle like a rectangle. Notice if your feet are coming apart or if your feet are coming off the floor. Keep your feet together like a cobra's tail, toes, and heels touch. Lock your legs. Push your feet down, squeeze your butt, push your hips down. Hands down, look up, chin up, chest up, stretch up, breathe up. Good, change, slowly lower down. Look to your right, left ear on the towel, arms down, palms face the ceiling, toes together, heels fall open. Second set, chin on the floor, place your hands flat on the floor below your shoulders. Make sure the hands are flat, not cupping, all five fingers together. Feet together, toes, heels touch, lock your legs, look up, and lift. So um, some people accuse this yoga of being very nitpicky, like we're like fingers together rather than fingers spread. But when you start to become conscious of all the small details in your body, like even what your toes and your uh, hands are doing, you start to become a little bit more like conscious in general. And that's kind of the goal, right? Sinking into a deeper state of awareness, like notice how you're breathing, still breathing through the nose. Keep your feet together, lock your legs, push your feet down, squeeze your butt, push your hips down, hands down. Look up, chin up, chest up, stretch up, breathe up. Good, change slowly with control, lower down. This time look to your left, right here on the towel. Arms down, palms face the ceiling. Bring your toes together, let your heels fall open. So it's an inverse opening to the hips and shoulders as you lie in belly savasana. Next is Locust Shalabhasana. Bring your chin forward, chin on your mat. Keep your arms down by your sides. Flip your shoulders, palms down. So now palms facing the floor, knuckles pointing to the ceiling, thumbs outside, fingers inside. You can keep your arms straight by your sides. As you're ready, walk your arms underneath you to stretch out the ligaments in the wrists, elbows, shoulders, fingers. So eventually arms underneath the body from a bird's eye view, I can't see your arms. One day pinky fingers touch. It's okay for the elbows to be a little bit uncomfortable, but you're never forcing your body. Eyes open. Lock your right leg, point your right toes, and lift your right leg up to a 45 degree angle, half of 90. You want your foot to come directly over the top of your head, so your two heels stay in line. If your right hip is lifting like way off of your right arm, drop your right hip down. See the foot come over the top of your head. Lock your leg, lock your leg, lock your leg. Change. Slowly right leg down. Relax your right side body, block your left leg, point your left toes, and lift your left leg up. Foot coming over the top of your head. Notice if your knee is bending, really lengthen the left leg. Like, imagine you're trying to turn on a light switch with your left big toe. So point the left toes, stretch it to the back wall, lift your heel up, hold here for three, two, one. Slowly with control, left leg down, change. For the third part, tuck your chin in, so lips are on the towel, they might be a little bit muffled. So I want you to keep your lips on the towel so your neck is long, protecting your neck. Bring your arms closer underneath you if you're able, grab the floor with your fingertips. Um, make sure you're pushing your shoulders down rather than your chest. So round the upper spine, try to suction cup your shoulders to the floor. Feet together, squeeze your butt, lock your legs, point your toes, and lift both legs up, come up, everybody come up, you can do it, struggle a little harder. Feet together, don't give up, toes, heels touch, lock your legs, shoulders down, mouth down, grab the floor with your fingertips, lift your thighs up. Good, change, slowly lower down, arms out, look to the right, left ear on the towel. So as you release the arms, you release the turn, it could affect lots of fresh blood rushing through the knuckles, wrists, elbows, and shoulders. The posture itself, when we lengthen the arms, stretches out the arms, but it also increases the heart rate. So when you release out, lots of fresh blood rushing through um, the hands, the wrists, elbows, and shoulders. Posture is really good if you have like arthritic joints, um, anything like that, right? Really good for blood flow. Second set, here we go. Chin on the floor, flip your palms down, thumbs outside, fingers inside. Waddle your arms underneath you as best you can. Eyes open, chin forward, lock your right leg, point your right toes, and lift your right leg up. So the one-legged part's really just like 
practice, right? For when we lift both legs up. See how high you can lift one leg? Anatomically, this is how high you can lift both at once. Practice pressing your shoulders down rather than your chest. Change, slowly right leg down. Relax right side, lock your left leg, point your left toes and lift your left leg up. We call this one a mind over the matter posture. The matter is usually the mind. Press the shoulders down, micro bend in the elbows. Root down, not through your wrists, but through your palms. Push your fingers down. Change, left leg down, grand finale, tuck your chin in, mouth down, kiss the towel, yeah, bring your arms a little closer. Underneath you, squeeze your butt, lock your legs, point your toes and lift both legs up. Come up, everybody come up, so again, Pressing down through the fingers, the knuckles, rather than the wrists. Micro bend in the elbows, shoulders down. Squeeze your butt, point your toes, feet together. Lift your legs up. Good, change slowly, lower down. Release your arms from underneath. Look to the left right here on the towel and let that one go. Some deep belly breaths in and out through your nose. Just massage the front of your body. Breathe deep into any point of tension. Let the floor hold you up. Full locust, point of shalabhasana. Bring your chin forward and your arms out to the side like airplane wings. Feet together, toes and heels touch. Lock your legs, squeeze your butt, point your toes, look up and fly. Arms, body, head, legs, everything lifts off the floor. Very nice. 747 taking off just your hip bones on the floor, the rest of your body's in there. So in this version of full locust, try to keep your arms out to the side, perpendicular to the body, fingers in line with the shoulders. If your arms are like coming back towards your thighs, bring them forward instead, but never force the shoulders if you have frozen shoulders. Notice what's going on with the feet. Keep your feet, knees together, toes, heels touch. Lift your thighs up, chin up, chest up, look up. Try to come up a little higher at the end. Good, change slowly, lower down. Tuck in your wings, look to the right, left ear on the top. So all these postures that we're doing on our belly are back bends. Specifically, we're strengthening the muscles around the spine. And all of the postures that we're doing on our belly are also working into some mobility in the shoulders, elbows, wrists as well, right? So this posture is good for strengthening the back muscles, but it's also good for like opening through the chest and shoulders. Second set, full locus, arms out to the side leg, airplane wings, sweep together. Toes, heels, touch, squeeze your butt, look up and lift everything, lifting up. So if you want, you can even like place your hands on your back for a second, like really feel how strong your back muscles are getting. I think it's pretty remarkable. Um, the style of yoga is so good for back pain, right? Through the back bends and through strengthening the muscles in the back, stretching the fascia on the chest, we heal our spine slowly over time, never forcing the body. Keep your feet together, look up to the ceiling, thighs up, chin up, chest up, look up, come up a little higher at the end. Good, change, slowly lower down, tuck in your wings, look to the left and breathe. Mm. Last in the spine strengthening series is a feet back bend called Dhanurasana or floor bow. So chin on the floor, bend your legs and try to grab your feet from the outside, just below the toes. Um, if you can't grab both feet, try to grab your right foot with your right hand left arm out in front, and second set, you will switch it out. Otherwise, grab your feet just below the toes. Try to bring your knees close together to start. Point your toes and squeeze your butt to engage your hamstrings. Look up and start to kick. Continuously keep kicking without stopping, without intermission. Now, in some versions of floor bow, you'll grab at the ankles or you'll be on your thighs. In this one, you want to roll forward, freeze between your ribs and hips. Don't rock back and forth. Do little sips of air in and out through the nose, grab towards the toes. Notice if your knees are way wider than your hips, bring your knees in, feet out, wrist straight, look up to the ceiling, kick, kick, kick. Good, change, slowly lower down. Look to your right, left ear on the towel. So as we've been looking left and right, it's a gentle twist through the neck and stretch through the shoulder. It's one of the other things that I love about this style of yoga, even just like the belly savasanas, like even when we're not actively in a posture, we're still getting benefits, right? Stretching on the shoulders, twisting the neck a little bit, eventually left ear on the floor, doesn't have to be today or tomorrow. Second set, chin on the floor, bend your legs, grab your feet from the outside. You can also grab like opposite foot, show you second set from the side. Try to have knees, feet close together, squeeze your butt, point your toes, look up and kick into your hands. So eventually feet coming over the top of your head. Again, notice if you're like rolling way far back, roll forward, freeze between your ribs and hips, hold still. Notice if your knees are way wider than your hips, bring your knees in, feet out, wrist straight, look up, point your toes to the ceiling, kick, kick, kick. Good change, slowly lower down. Look to the left, right ear on the towel, still breathing. 
Take a slow inhale through your nose. Even slower exhale through your nose. Okay, multitasking. Great, put your hands on the floor. Let's generate a little bit of heat by holding a 30 second plank. So tuck your toes under and lift up. Uh, we don't normally do this in a hot room, but I like to do it towards the end of class here. So pull the belly in, hug the elbows in a little bit, shoulders wide, shoulders over wrists, lift your heels up, contract your thighs, you can do it. Line with the shoulders, pull the belly in, elbows in, root down through all 28 knuckles, this week, next fingers, press down there. You should definitely answer. Did you say something, Ben? I want to beat the shit out of that. Okay, good. Okay. Come on up. Come to um, the top of your mat and towel for fixed firm Supta Vajrasana. So I'll show you this one from the front as well as from the side. Start with your hands on the floor in front of you in tabletop and open your feet. You can also open up your knees as well. Now you're welcome to stay here, okay? As you're ready, walk your hands back towards your feet and eventually you'll sink your hips down between your heels doesn't have to be today or tomorrow. You can keep your hands on the floor in front of you, beside you, or behind you the whole time if your butt's not quite on the floor yet, okay? If you find that you're sitting on your feet, open your feet wider. Eventually, hips touch, pardon me, heels touch the outsides of the hips. You can stay here, or when you're ready, put your hands on your feet. Bend your right elbow down, stopping anywhere you feel a point of pain. Left elbow down, knees never come off the floor. Both elbows touch the floor, drop your head back. If your head touches the floor, tuck your chin in. Back shoulders on the floor, arms over your head, grab your elbows each other and pull. Wherever you are is perfect. You want a gentle stretch through your toes, ankles, knees, and hips, but never a point of pain. Good change. Put your hands on your feet, come up carefully. Head up last. Turn around, Savasana. Head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. So often the postures that are hardest for us are the ones that we need the most. Savasana, bring your heels together, let your toes fall open, arms down, palms face the ceiling, eyes open, mouth closed, breathing normal. So if that posture fixed firm is like really hard for you, like you can go one inch into it, that's wonderful. Stay right there. That one inch is so therapeutic, so beneficial, especially with the knees. Please never force yourself to go deeper into the posture. We're much more interested in sensation and form than depth. Um, second set, we'll do a sit up between every set of every posture. Again, you can roll off to the side here. Otherwise, legs together, arms over your head, only cross your thumbs. Tuck your chin to your chest, hold your breath, and sit up. Elbows to floor, forehead to knee. Good. Try and come to the top of your mat and tell second set fix frame. So remember, you can keep your hands on the floor in front of you, beside you, or behind you the whole time. Slowly over time, you're stretching out the toes, ankles, shins, and knees. When you're ready, walk your hands back, sink your hips down between your heels. Doesn't have to be today or tomorrow. Put your palms on your soles and go slow. Listen to your body. Right elbow down, left elbow down, head back, head on the floor. Tuck your chin and neck, shoulders on the floor, arms over your head, grab your elbows. If that's all gravy, maybe bring your knees back together, but knees never come off the floor. Change, put your hands on your feet, push up carefully. Head up last, turn around, Savasana. Head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat, arms down, eyes open. And this is one of those postures where um, I believe like the release the savasana is just as therapeutic as the posture itself. So in fixed firm, right, we created a little bit of a tourniquet effect on the lower body. And then when we release into savasana, envision all this like beautiful, highly oxygenated blood flowing through your toes, your ankles, your knees, and your hips. So really picture this highly oxygenated blood like working through scar tissue in the lower body, any stiffness in the joints, a little visualization goes a long way. You're welcome to roll off to the side here, otherwise another sit up. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Round your spine, elbows to floor, forehead to knee. Good, turn, come to the back of your mat and towel, half tortoise, Ardha Karmasana. Sit knees, feet together, hips on your heels. Inhale your arms over your head sideways, palms together, cross your thumbs. I'll show you for the first set from the side. If it hurts to sit on your feet, you're always welcome to start standing on your shins. 
stretch up as tall as you can and go down with a flat back arm to your ears. You're welcome to put one or both hands on the floor to walk yourself forward. Otherwise, go down, arms to your ears, forehead to floor, squeeze your feet together, little fingers to floor, squeeze your palms together. So active arms here, palms together, tilt your pinky fingers down, try to get elbows and wrists off the floor. As you inhale, reach your arms forward, as you exhale, sink your hips down. One day, forehead touches the floor, hips touch the heels at the same time with a flat back. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Good, change, come up, you can push yourself up or come up, arms with your ears. Nice, arms down, turn around, Savasana head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. And every time you release into Savasana, picture your body just softening a little bit to the floor and let the floor hold you up. In Savasana, especially when we're on a relatively hard surface, um, think about everything kind of lengthening, right? Creating a little bit more space between the joints tendons, ligaments, let the muscles stretch out. Okay, you can roll off to the side or legs together, arms over your head, flex your feet, squeeze your seat, sit up. Elbows to floor, forehead to knees, double jerk, double exhale. Good, come to the back of your mountain top, second set, half tortoise. Sit knees, feet together, hips on your heels, arms over your head, palms together, cross your thumbs, maybe other thumb on top, stretch up, chin away from your chest, go down. Chin away from your chest, try to touch forehead to floor, then little fingers to floor, squeeze your feet together. Forehead to floor, little fingers to floor. Tilt your pinky fingers down, reach your arms forward, sink your hips down, re-energize, reorganize, revitalize. Good, change, slowly come up. Nice, arms down, turn around, Savasana. The next two postures are our deepest back bend followed by our deepest forward curl. They're like the summit of the floor series. Do not skip these next two postures. Um, they're like so good for a healthy back, right? Especially if like your work environment has changed or um, just kind of like how you're living has changed in the last month or so. A lot of us are carrying extra tension in the shoulders and the hips. These next two postures are so good for undoing some of that. We'll start with camel, a deep back bend. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up, round your spine. Enjoy the stretch. Good, okay, turn, come to the top of your mat and towel for camel, ustrasana, our deepest back bend. Stand on your knees, six inches between your knees and your feet, and if you have tight knees, you can roll up your mat a little bit so there's extra padding under your knees. Place your hands at your back. I'll show you the first one from the side. So thumbs outside, fingers down to the floor. Push your hips forward. Try to keep your hips over your knees. You can squeeze your butt. Keep your eyes open and at first just look up to the ceiling. If that feels okay, relax your head all the way back. It starts at the neck. You can stay here with your hands on your back. You can also start to go back halfway and then freeze in the middle. Check in. Are you breathing? Do you feel okay? When you're ready, right hand down, grab your right heel. Left hand down, grab your left heel. Thumbs outside, fingers inside full palm grip on your heels. If you can't grab your heels yet, keep your hands on your back. As you inhale, lift your chest up. As you exhale, push stomach, thighs, hips forward, hips over knees, chest up to the ceiling, chin away from your throat, look for your toes behind you. We're gonna reverse out. So to safely come out, place your hands on your back first and without twisting your spine, Carefully push up so your head comes up last. Turn around, Savasana, head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. So maybe that posture um, felt like hunky dory, but if right now you feel like dizzy, nauseous, lightheaded, um, any of that stuff that's really normal, let Savasana kind of reset you. So what we're doing in that posture is stretching out the front of your body. Sometimes you'll hear yoga teachers be like, we hold tension in our hips. And that's true. If that doesn't do it for you, let me give you the scientific explanation of it. We are stretching what's called the solar plex nerve system, a big bundle of nerves that wants to be stretched out, but is often incredibly tight. When we stretch out this nerve center, when we stretch through the shoulders that we've been tensing up all day, and the hips that we've been concaving into when we watch the news, when we stretch all that out, it can feel a little bit intense, but your body really needs it. So if you feel like, whoa, that was really intense, 
Um, there is nothing wrong with you. There is nothing wrong with you doing the posture. Do second set. If you're like, what's she talking about? I don't feel anything in that posture. That's fine too. But if you, whole, if you feel a whole bunch, there's nothing wrong with you. Do second set. Here we go. Legs together, arms over your head. Tuck your chin to your chest. Sit up. Elbows to floor, forehead to knees. Good, okay. Come to the top of your mat and tall second set. You can open your knees a little wider if you want, so open the hips more, eight to 10 inches between your knees. Still keep six inches between your feet. Put your hands at your lower back, thumbs outside, fingers down to the floor. Push your hips forward, keep your eyes open, and just go slow. Um, if in the first set you had to come out early, go a little bit slower. Remember, you can keep your hands on your back the whole time. At first, just looking up to the ceiling. If it feels all right, drop your head back. Remember, you can stay here or one day go back halfway and eventually right hand down, left hand down, thumbs outside, fingers inside. Press hips forward, lift chest up, drop your head back. All right, when you're ready, we'll carefully release out. So place your hands on your back first and then push up without twisting your spine. Head up last. Very nice. Turn around. Savasana. Head to the front of your mat. Feet to the back of your mat. Let your spine realign to a nice flat floor. Allow the floor to hold you up. Even though we're physically apart, remember that we're not socially distanced at all. In fact, in many ways, I feel so much closer to some of you guys than I ever had before. So thank you all so much for practicing yoga. Let's take a collective breath, breath together. Take a slow inhale through your nose. And a slow exhale through your nose, remembering you are not alone. That was our deepest back bend. Let's keep going. Next, we'll do our deepest forward curl. Grab it, sasangasana. Let's hop to it. Legs together, arms over your head. It's so cheesy. Cross your thumbs, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Wonderful. Rabbit. Sasangasana. We're going to go in the opposite direction, rounding our spine. So sit knees, feet together, hips on your heels. Make L's with your hands. You're going to flip your palms down and grab your heels from the outside. So thumbs outside, fingers inside, full palm grip on your heels. It's actually the same grip as in camel pose, but this time we're sitting on the heels. So stretch up as tall as you can, and then tuck your chin to your chest and round your spine belly in. You may have to adjust your ponytail. You want to touch forehead to knees, automatically top of head to floor. Reach back. Make sure you're grabbing your heels up to the arches of your feet. Belly in. Pull on your heels and lift your hips up. Now, if your feet are coming off the floor or if your grip slides, ease up a little bit here. There's very little weight in your neck and head. Pull hard on your heels. If there's a gap between your knees and head, you can walk your knees up one by one but head stays in place. Try to squeeze your heels together. Invite your hips closer forward, shoulders up, heels together, belly in, round your spine. Change, hips down first. Slowly uncurl, vertebra by vertebra by vertebra. Feels so good, head up last, turn around. Savasana, head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. I always like to savor the exit on that one, slowly uncurling. Vertebrae by vertebrae, I think can feel really good. It almost feels like a massage to my back. So you're trying to um, articulate your vertebrae. In other words, you're trying to create space between every vertebrae. If you notice there's a part of your back that you can't feel, it's probably where you're tightest. For most of us, it's the middle spine. So second set, really try to feel each bone kind of moving, opening. Here we go, legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Remember every sit up, round your spine. <laughs> Elbows to floor, floor to knees. Good. So second set, rabbit, knees, feet together. Grab your heels from the outside, thumbs outside, fingers inside, full palm grip on your heels. Stretch up, tuck your chin to your chest, go down. Forehead to knees, top of head to floor, pull on your heels, lift your hips up. Everybody, shoulders up, belly in, stomach in, round your spine. You can walk your knees up one by one, but head stays in place. Heels together, shoulders up, hips a little more forward. Good, chin chips down and then slowly uncurl. Keep the chin tucked to chest, feels so good. Head up last, very nice. Turn around, Savasana, almost to the end. Everybody is doing great. So in the last couple minutes of class, sometimes our mind starts to wander to like what comes after class, but 
I invite you to stay here in the present moment with this breath, with your body, with your fellow yogis. Finish strong. Legs together, arms over your head, flex your feet, squeeze your seat, sit up. Good, turn, face your beautiful self. For head to knee pose, Janu Sharasana. Right leg to the top right corner of your mat, bend your left leg all the way in. You want your hips square so your legs make an L, a 90 degree angle. Inhale your arms over your head, stretch up. It's called head to knee pose. Look to your right, tuck your chin to your chest, exhale, round your spine, so articulate your vertebrae just like the last one. Eventually, forehead to knee, interlock your 10 fingers, flex your toes back, bend your elbows down, try to touch elbows to floor. Now, if you're like, no way in hell, that's really normal. Here's the good news. This posture is simply called head to knee pose. You don't have to keep your right leg straight. You can bend your right leg as much as you need to touch your knee and head together, and you're in business. Front side compression, throat choked, eyes open, breathing normal. Change, arms up, left leg out, right leg all the way in, stretch up. Turn to your left, round your spine, try to touch forehead and knee together. Again, you can bend your front leg a whole bunch and then try to interlock your fingers and grab your um, left foot just below the knee. Nice tight grip. Bend elbows down, opening shoulder blades, scapula, pull your belly in, right elbow down, right shoulder down, roll into the right. Good, change, arms up, both legs out in front of you, carefully lie down, let your spine realign, hands it up. Hashimotanasana stretching. I'll show you from the sides so you don't have a close-up view of my very unmanicured toes. So bend your knees, hook onto your big toes with your peace sign fingers, middle and index fingers, put your thumbs on top, and then as you're ready, walk your hips back, right, left. Please note, this is a different posture from the last one. Rather than rounding the spine to touch the forehead to knees, we're gonna try and arch our spine so one day forehead touches the toes. Knees can stay bent if it helps you keep your spine flat. So rather than rounding, like arch and try to touch stomach to thighs. If you can get your legs straight today with a flat back, then go ahead and lock your legs and then bend elbows down. Whoa, going down with a flat back, stomach to thighs, chest to knees, one day toes and head touch. Good, change, come up, turn around, Savasana. Very nice. So it's a little bit nuanced, right? In the one-legged part, we're rounding the spine, squeezing the stomach. When both legs are together, we're stretching the spine, stretching the stomach. A little bit different motions with the upper body, but in both cases, knees can bend. Second set, legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up, heels on the floor. Good, so second set, head to knee, Johnny Shrasana, right leg out, left leg in, two legs, make an L. Inhale your arms over your head, stretch up, exhale, turn to your right, tuck your chin to your chest, go down. Now, if you can keep your legs straight with your forehead on your knee, Go ahead and lock your leg. Try to get heel off the floor, contract the quadricep muscle. Even if your knee is bending, flex your right toes back to your face. Great way to stretch to the Achilles calf one day, even the hamstring. Change, arms up, left leg out, right leg in, stretch up, turn to your left, round your spine. If your forehead and knee touch easily with a bent leg, play around with lengthening the leg. If your leg is straight, lock your leg, bend elbows down, pull your elbows down, pull your belly in, roll the shoulders away from the ears. Right elbow down, right hip down, right knee down, roll into the right. Change, arms up, both legs out, carefully lie down, let your spine realign, hands it up. Stretching, Paschimottanasana. One thing that'll happen in this posture is that the toes will turn in like tacos. Um, Taco Tuesday was yesterday and I hope you enjoyed it, but for today, you're gonna try and have the soles of your feet flat. So notice if the hips are rotating so that the toes turn in, you wanna spiral your inner thighs down and flex your toes back so the feet are flat, okay? Second set stretching, bend your knees, hook onto your big toes, scoot your butt back, right, left, right, left. Again, notice if your toes are turning in, you're gonna spiral the inner thighs down, contract the hip flexors, your legs are straight, lock your legs, chest up, belly in, and slowly go down, stomach to thighs, pull, shoulders back, chest and knees stretch, lengthen the neck spine, breast going forward, towards the end, lengthen your neck, without tucking chin to chest, chin away from the chest, just slide forward a little bit more, one day forehead and toes touch. Nice, change, come up, turn around, Savasana. Last posture of the day is a spine twist, meant to reset your back after all of your hard work. Should feel really good. Here we go. Legs together, arms over your head. Tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Biceps with your ears. 
nice turn face your beautiful self in the front here. Last posture of the day, Ardha Matsandrasana spine twist. Remember that I'm not mirroring you. So take a moment, identify left from right. Don't mix them up. Bend your left leg on the floor. Touch your right heel to your left knee corner. You are also welcome to have your left leg straight out in front of you. Bring your right arm close behind you like a second spine. Left arm up and over. Grab your left knee with your left hand. Hand, heel, and knee touch. Look down and if you are sitting on your left foot, slide it out of the way. Roll to the right. Evenly distribute your body weight on your butt cheeks. Inhale, stretch out belly in. Exhale, look over your right shoulder twist. You can keep your hand behind you or take it off the floor, grabbing your hip, your waistband, one day the inner thigh. Inhale, stretch out belly in. Exhale, look over your right shoulder, twist, twist, twist. Feels so good. Change, unwind, swap out your legs, bend your right leg on the floor, touch your left heel to your right knee corner, left arm close behind you, right arm up, stretch up and over. Grab your right knee with your right hand. So from the side, hand, heel, and knee touch. Now notice if you're leaning way back, walk your hand in more. So try to keep spine straight. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, look over your left shoulder twist. You can keep your hand behind you for balance or take it off the floor. Try to keep spine straight, chest up, rib cage open. Keep the left foot on the floor, right knee down, shoulders down. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, look over your left shoulder twist, twist, twist. Feels so good. Change, unwind. Turn around, Savasana. Still breathing. We started class with a breathing exercise, exhaling through the mouth. Then we in class full circle with another breathing exercise, exhaling through the mouth. Kapal Bhati breathing, soul shining breathing. Here we go. Legs together, hands over your head. Tuck your chin to your chest. Sit up, good sit ups. <laughs> Wonderful. Turn. Face your beautiful self. Ideally, you will sit in Vajrasana or firm pose. So knees, feet together, hips on your heels, hands on your thighs. Um, if it hurts to sit on your feet, don't do it silly. You can sit crisscross applesauce or with your legs out in front of you, depending on the proportion of your arms, spine, and legs. You might have your hands on the floor or on your thighs. But either way, you want nice long arms to support a nice long spine. In this version of Kapalbhati, exhale through your mouth. And as you exhale through your mouth, snap your belly in. So it sounds like this. When the stomach relaxes, the inhale will happen automatic. So the exhale is quite audible, but the inhale is uh, very subtle. Like you can't really hear it. You'll just notice that you can continuously exhale without like losing your breath. Ready? So lick your lips. Pretty cool. So all a couple times. Concentrate. Meditate. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Lick your lips. Swallow a couple times. Chest up. Shoulders down. Have fun. <laughs> Four, three, two, one. Good for you. Honor yourself. Give yourself a hug. High five. Pat on the back. Turn around. Final Savasana. Close your eyes. Open your arms and legs. Stay as long as you want. You can starfish. You can roll out your hips and shoulders. Then we'll just take three slow breaths together. Take a slow inhale through your nose. Inhaling gratitude towards yourself. Slow exhale through your nose, exhaling any self-doubt. A slow inhale through your nose, inhaling gratitude for your fellow yogis. Slow exhale through the nose, releasing any feelings of being alone, remembering that we're still together as a community. Take a slow inhale through your nose, inhaling gratitude for your body all the amazing things that it does for you. And a slow exhale through your nose. Picture yourself in perfect, radiant health.
thank you guys all so much for joining me today. If you have any questions, please let me know. You can email me at hollyhancockyoga at gmail.com. Um, you're welcome to take this class just as a gift from me to you. You can also donate to me via Venmo at Holly Hancock or paypal.me slash hollyrichelh. And yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. I love you all.